this is uh, talk for performing code review inside your development team. And uh, firstly, I want to thank the sponsors and the organization. It's going pretty well. Uh, this is my first talk in English, so bear with me. Uh, I'm afraid that is loosely related to Drupal. I'm going to try to talk about how we do code review in Drupal.org, but that's it. There is no more Drupal code or anything. And I want to say that this talk is saying that people are not very convinced about code review. So we will do an overview of the tools available that you can use for doing code review and I will, they will help you a lot. And some bit of comparison if you're already on code review because I know mo most of you do pull requests on GitHub and things like that. And there is another tool around there. And it's a pretty new topic. I, uh, there is teams that they don't, could, could, they don't do code review yet, so I think it's pretty hot to talk about. So who am I? Uh, Rodrigo Aguilera on Drupal.org. I work uh, in Imbra, a small shop in Barcelona. We do Drupal projects. And you can find me on IRC as Rodrigo Aguilera. I contribute with the Drupal 8 multilingual initiative. It's what I'm sprinting on, on Drupal Dev Days. And you can find me on the sprint rooms if you want to contribute on that. Also on, on IRC and also Rodrigo Aguilera. But Marinero on Twitter. And first, I wanted to do the acknowledgments in the first slides because everyone leaves that for the last and I don't feel like they deserve this treatment. Um, so first, Pedro Cambra, I don't know if you heard of him, is a top Drupal developer and he brought a code review to our team and it was great. And I also want to thank Imbra because he believes in code review and that is pretty <coughs> key to, to everything that I'm going to talk about. And maybe it's because I've been in traumatic companies with, uh, without code review, without anyone knowing about others' work, but this is my experience and I'm going to talk about it. Um, so why? Why we should do code review? Um, first of all, I want to know how many do you consider that you do code review in your team? Well, some people. It's, it's great. And it has many benefits, and I'm very excited about it. Uh, first, it reduces defects. Defects, if, if people is looking at, uh, well, I'm not, I'm not going to talk only about people. Only machines can also do code review. We have calling silence and things like that. Uh, I'm not going to be a sellout about, hey, you don't do code review the good way. Any code review is, is great. So one thing that does is uh, spreads code on, on ownership. I've been talking around with people in Drupal Dev Days because I wanted to bring up the topic of code review and they say that reduces fear because now the the responsibility on the code is on the team, so they are sure that the, the code belongs to the team and everyone is happy. So it helps mentor new developers. This is, uh, I cannot emphasize enough how great it is for mentoring. And it changed my life as a, as a developer. Before I felt alone and I learned a lot with code review, I was interacting more with my team, so it's great. But the sad, thi the sad thing is that no one does code review. It's wow. uh, one of the um, main excuses to, for code review is that they think they're too busy to review. But uh, if you don't do code review and you want to fix a bug, is the, is the moment to do it, to do code review, to fix the bug. I mean, if you do it in code review, it's much, much, much better. Uh, code reviews can get nasty. I mean, if there's some frictions between members of your team, code review is going to 
make them float, that are, you are going to notice. And maybe you have problems in communication that are not related to code. But uh, we are, I'm going to talk later about how to remove the ego out of it. Uh, it's been said that it introduces a block, but uh, the time that you spend on code review is not as much as you will spend explaining your code to others or explaining the whole project because with code review everyone knows about the, the <coughs> whole project. Uh, people don't want to leave the IDE because most code review tools are external to the IDE. We have code sni sn sniper and things like that. But um, there is also tools that integrate, you can integrate code review inside your, your IDE, so it's great. And as I said, it's a cost effective, effective solution. You can, you can detect the, the defects much more earlier and they are not going to cause a problem because all the code is going to be according to the architecture and all the experience that the team knows, they know the pitfalls and things like that. Don't do this code, do it this way because it's going to fail later, it works now. Okay. And at the end, it's all about code quality. If you are not really into code quality and you just want to get the job done, there is not much sense to code review. It, you need a previous step to be convinced about this. What am I talking about? So Wikipedia defines this as a systematic review of code by, of code by your peer developer. And we use code review as a, hey, stop. I don't want this, this code here. I want better code. So we use it as a firewall, kind of a firewall. So what do you have to do? To pre some kind of preview steps to code review. So try to make everything code. Uh, it's not only the app that you're building, it's also the way you deploy, the boilerplate code you use for building modules, for building projects, um, all, all that you can think of can be, that can be code can be reviewed. Uh, so try to review everything, not only the logic, but configuration, finance, variable naming. Uh, if you find a variable that is named in a very nasty way, you get like, mm, I want to fix it, but I don't want to clash with another developer <coughs> about this. And everything that can, that can be diff can be reviewed. Maybe some teams find uh, an interest in diffing images. For example, GitHub has, has some tools, but we mostly review uh, with this code, if you can find the difference. And be aware, because uh, code reviews will ignore some files because for example we use SAS, Compass, things like that and you shouldn't review the code that these tools are generating or, or other tools uh, and more things that you can review that I'm thinking is uh, we use Rust Make so we review the, the country modules that are being used and sometimes we add patches <coughs> and uh, be, aware that you should be aware that you should also review those patches because they kind of introduce code into your project, so that's it. Uh, at the end, it's a change in the, in the team culture. You're going to notice this change. And finally, my code is going to be read. I'm not writing a comment that is going to go into the black hole of the repository. Uh, this is great, that you don't feel alone anymore. Uh, you can make code activity visible. Uh, is at the end, it's what we do day to day. Is anyone can see what I'm doing, or it's not just in, in it's not enclosed in our laptop, you know? Uh, it makes code, uh, code digestible. Um, if you want someone to review your chunk of code that you've been writing for a week, they are going to say, no, this is, this is horrible, please split it. So it, it encourages small changes. Um, and it also supports conversations about code. 
that maybe they, they weren't happening in your team. Uh, my goal is teaching you into a change in this culture. So the thing is that some of the tools I'm presenting you are a bit opinionated. So this, conversa this conversation happens happen in a way with uh, some comments, with inline comments, just below the code. Um, the code review is the best time to talk about parts of the application you like. Because for example, we have um, retrospectives and we talk sometimes about code in those retrospectives, but you should talk before about this code. <coughs> You, you shouldn't be opening a file and finding code that you don't like because it's demoralizing. And it's all about the, you can show me the code. If, uh, if you have a tool that it, you use for code review, hey, upload your code to, to the tool and we will talk about it. Um, this is kind of controversial, so, but you should be proud about your team. The, the code, at the end doesn't matter. It's uh, the work that we do. The code belongs to everyone. It can be worse or better, but it's the team that makes the work. So uh, if you have uh, some conflict uh, to maybe two senior developers don't agree on the code and they should try to reach an agreement. It's not about doing their way or my way is don't try to impose your views. Uh, this is great. The, I don't have to talk uh, near to the coffee, the coffee machine about the code that I'm making. You can view it on the, on the tool and it, you transmit the solution because you have the comment message and this code is about that. Um, and you can, yeah. Well, I said it's, uh, you have a tool and you can share the code with links and we can talk about it. Um, and we, if you introduce code review, you are going to define a process. So when you uh, need to introduce a change, you know how to do it. And that process has to be very clear, but it can also be very flexible, like can be do can be did this way or do your, this other way. And there's uh, another sad thing. When uh, in the previous stage of code review, some, sometimes you find someone saying, hey, can you have a look at my code? But in our, in our experience, never happens. It's like, yeah, yeah, when I have some times and it, that comment gets lost. <coughs> And also it encourages multifunctional teams this way because I look at, I am a backend developer, but I look at CSS code and sometimes I make, I make comments. And I, when I, maybe some week everyone's on vacation and I have to do some CSS, now I know how to do it. I can look at this part of code that was made and that, that way. And yeah, new developers. It's great for new developers. I cannot emphasize this enough. Again, because um, they will gain experience much faster, they will feel pretty sure. Um, and for example, for me, when in code review was introduced in my team, I was still kind of fresh. And I f at some points I feel pretty grumpy about it. I have to do a hook <coughs> install that it was running great, I used SQL, but someone said, please don't use SQL, use entity field query for this, you're using fields. I was, mm. but I en ended up using uh, entity field query and it was great and now I use it a lot and I, from that moment on, I can identify when I use, when I can use entity field query. That's this, just an example. So if you are worried that your junior developers might introduce some bugs into your code, you have code review. They will feel safe um, because junior developers, they want to commit code. It's, it works, it, it, what they have been doing in the school, in college, 
and they they put things that works and you get them out of this philosophy like hey let's stop let's think about architecture yeah this works but we used to do it another way to be consistent things like that um, when you when they are in the code review process they 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 want to get feedback and because they want to get their code in they ask questions they say why this way why not this way and they can also say comments in the code review tool they can say hey i don't understand this maybe it's the correct way but i don't know why is this being made i want to learn and it's because they block them a little when I'm, what i talked about before like there is a bit of a block because they made the code and it's not in the in the repo yet but they have to talk about the code to get it in so some things to get started now you you are prepared your culture is going to change be prepared and i recommend to you that you go slow maybe start with one team with one repo um, do maybe just the diffs because uh, you can maybe you can review all the part of the code all the code but do with the changes that are do it with the changes that are being introduced because uh, you can also review this scary smelly part you have a function that is thousand lines long and you know it's it can be splitted and you can comment on parts with the people <coughs> that made it that it's a good way to start by the way for this you need a post commit so um, after the after because your commits have been made and i'm going to talk about the, the tools later and also if you're reviewing the diffs try to not not lose focus because you might see some code around that you don't like but please focus on the on the code that is being changed. Well, we do that in Drupal or a lot. Someone changes code that doesn't belong to the to the issue that we're talking about. And I also recommend you that you get every member of the team on board, not just the senior developer reviewing the others. Try to encourage everyone to get feedback and give feedback to others. And you can also go the old way. That's great way to also to do code review, like on demand, but introduce a process, like not just an email, like some kind of request that has to be closed. Like I reviewed this. Okay, so this is our these are some, some <coughs> concepts, like uh, pre-commit review. What I talked about, like uh, code review as a firewall. It, it does the code doesn't get introduced into the into the code into the main branch until it gets reviewed and it's the most interesting tool is the most interesting thing to make because it's what I talked about that it reduces defects before they get introduced and it's a phase that you're more eager to change architecture you cannot change architecture in that phase and it's great and also we have post commit tools that you have all your rep you have all your repo and you can open tickets on parts of the repo that you don't like and they have to be closed maybe it can be done in the common interface that you have for browsing code on the internet on a browser okay first we have a uh, first stage to be a uh, code review by machines what uh, I'm referring about machines is um, in a code review we don't want to be pedantic we want the machines to be pedantic like hey there is a <coughs> final stop here uh, the spaces the space in between lines things like that don't, we don't want humans to do that we don't we want machines that's why we have code sniffer coder module that we can integrate with other tools and they are going to say things about coding standards they are going to execute the test and they are going to say you broke the code with this, this new change um, yeah the 
the whole philosophy of having the having the build red until you get it green, things like that. Uh, a thing that might happen with new developers is that you have to explain to them the importance of coding standards, that co code is readable, things like that. Uh, you can do a lot of things with, with, uh, with machines, uh, automated builds that they are going to be executed. We kind of do everything in the, in the build, in our Jenkins instance. And there is mess detector that detects complexity introduced, duplicate code, things like that, I'll, I'll, you name it, you know. And uh, we also have code reviewed by humans that, well, machines are very advanced at this, at this point, but we are not out, out of jobs because humans, we can talk about requirements that are, are needed by the application that we are developing, architecture, uh, future-proof code, because we all know PHP 7 is coming, Drupal 8 is coming, we can develop some stuff that it can be easily migrated from Drupal 7 to Drupal 8, like using objects and what you heard about many times. I mean, you have coding idioms. We have a way of uh, checking for a role. Uh, we have a way of uh, loading a node and checking for a field, maybe with entity API, maybe without it when it's not needed. And um, developers that have been around more time, they know when you can reuse code from other projects and from other parts of the project. And what no one can tell you about is the domain. The if we are developing a, a plain uh, ticket application, the, the, applica the code has to talk about planes and objects that are plane reservations, things like that. And review happens in other professions. Why the, the journalist makes review with editors and things like that? Why not in code? Why it's not so spread? It? And one way, that is not exactly a tool to do code review, but it's fair programming. It's great. It's, it's been proven <coughs> that that helps a lot new developers and even senior developers pairing each other. It happens in real time. It's very effective and you can mentor new developers in with fair programming. We do it a lot in the spring rooms but it has some problems because the conversation that they have is lost and requires people on site. You can, it's, there is tools. Uh, I think uh, some guy from Nullabot told me about a tool that I forgot about the name and they can change code. There's kind of one host that they have their local, they, he has their local, local file and the others can hang out join a hangout and edit code with him. And yeah, we have technology, breaks barriers, but it has less value for the rest of the team. You cannot do pair programming with all the team. Well, if you're small, yes, but the conversation, like I said, the conversation is lost and it's lost and they, it's not, they doesn't, doesn't have value for them. Okay, I'm going to warn you a bit what happens. Maybe you recall this this situation <coughs> because it's what happens if you don't do code review. Um, okay, so code and apps being very personal. This is the part that Joe made. It's no one in, no one else is going to touch it because no one else knows about the part that part of the code. And um, no one has a full picture of the project because you haven't looked at all the code, uh, you end up with dark code that has never been looked at and it's probably ugly code. Um, there is blaming around, you don't reuse functions, things like that, end up with monster code, it's old and it's scary. Uh, and bad code might remain in this condition forever until you made a, an audit of, of the code and you see that this part needs to be changed. It's, it's kind of what experience in Drupal 7 to Drupal 8 because the process is now more strict. Like 
we are we now say hey this needs test we don't want to pass it um, and before I talked about this there is no code reuse because no one knows about other functions that do the, the same thing and gets everyone into into learning code maybe you have uh, ten members of documentation that they can bring something to the to the review process and at the end we are all a team and we are all responsible for the code so there should be no fear to introduce code review process so i'm going to talk about tool assisted code review now we are going to introduce some tools and the benefits that that gives give us is manage the workflow you can have now a not a strict work workflow can be flexible, but it's, it's defined. Everyone should know what the what is the workflow. Um, it has records of discussion. You can revisit the thread or comments, uh, and you can see who is the developer who made the change, and you can ask them why. Why is this? Because there is an there should be an historic of the conversation that uh, that happened. It's asynchronous, so yeah, like I said, fair programming is great, but uh, you need the two developers uh, that in the same time zone, in the same place. Um, some tools are very opinionated. They know, they, they kind of know how you should make code review. And you should, if you want to introduce a code review, you should have a look you know, at all the tools that are available. Uh, for me, the minimum requirements ac actually for code review is that it does divs. You can comment on the divs, and you have some sta state type. This is reviewed. It can go in. Uh, really, you don't. These are the extras, but you don't need it. If you have a strict policies about roles, then your tool can do auto merge in the repository. It can do the commits. It can replace them. Maybe notifications. Well, notifications are, are kind of needed because the review tool might get forgotten and, and no one is going to review code, so it's great when you have notifications. And yeah, integration with other tools like code sniffer, things like that. So some tools. We have good old patches, like in Drupal.org, and you submit the patch, it gets interdiffed, things like that. Pull requests, uh, it's the same concept in GitHub, it's the same concept in GitLab, in Bitbucket, uh, commits, review them, please. Uh, we use Garrett, that's our code review tool. And you can also use Redman <coughs> as a post code review tool, post, post commit, I mean. So this is where Drupal R patches, and we should all be familiar with it because contributing to Drupal R is cool. Uh, it feels like kind of an, uh, a legacy way to review, but it's not because big free software projects like Beam, the, uh, the Linux kernel, and they 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 I feel very comfortable with it. I remember a conversation where Linu they have um, a clone of the Linux repo in GitHub and they received a pull request and Linux went, went, went nuts. Like, pull requests are so bad, I don't like the way GitHub is doing pull requests, we have another way, blah, 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 and they, they use patches in the, in the mailing list. So for me, it feels like a, it's a way that can be, that is as legit as any other way. Uh, for doing real code review, uh, you, if you look at the paths, black and white is kind of scary. So we use Redditor. Then you can view the div, you can click on the, click on the inter div, and it, you, can, you get colors, you can make comments. It, it serves the purpose for Drupal.org. And you can also have simply test me that you can get a patch and test it with the interface, and that is great. Simple test me is a great tool for for doing review, actually. 
<coughs> we have GitHub pull requests. They are called mail requests or whatever in other tools. I don't. They you can the concept is uh, it's between branches. You have a branch and you want to merge with another branch. Even can be they can be remote branches in different repos, things like that. Um, uh, the idea is that they can span many comments. I'll, I'm springing in the same room as the rules guys, and they are developing the rules Drupal 8 module on GitHub. But when they pass those commits to to Git to uh, to Drupal org, they squash them. They squash them in one commit, so it's one change that is a ticket. And yeah, your <coughs> GitHub doesn't really doesn't really care much about your history. Yeah. Because you can get merge commits, things like that. With Garrett, we get like a kind of a linear history. And I'm going to introduce you to Garrett. And we even have a, a mascot. It's a Kung Fu review cuckoo. And it gets mad when uh, it cannot be rebased automatically and you have to do some some work. It's written in Java. It's re pretty well packed. It's very easy to run. There is, you can make your own uh, Debian packages. It's doesn't, it's not carried to install. And it's this kind of tool that is, does one thing and does it good. Well, as good as it can be. And uh, apart from doing code review, you can, ho well, you have to host your repos in Garrett. Garrett kind of takes, takes control of your, of your, of your repo. There is big projects using it. Android, Cyanogen is another, kind of clone of Android Wikimedia that is uh, the software that runs Wikipedia so it's pretty important OpenStat, Chrome and other Google inside, the, inside their, their project use it a lot and Garrett itself is developed on, on Garrett obviously um, here we have an structure of how Garrett works you have your developers getting code from the main repository and they kind of submit, they push their changes to another pool of changes that they need to be reviewed. You have a um, reviewer that they can even, they, they can even get the changes and review them if they work. Uh, and this, uh, and this, well, the build server can also get changes from the, um, from the pending changes pool because uh, if you do automatic builds, you want your builds to work on every change that the developers are, are making. Um, in, uh, in, this, in this workflow, the submit, when it's approved, like the, the green uh, for, by the reviewer, when it's approved, the code gets merged into the repository. It, if it can be automatically merged and rebased, things like that, it's, it's made by Garrett. And you have granular permissions that you can have roles if you, if you want to. And yeah, you can integrate the, the continuous integration tool. Uh, this is not the list that I want you to focus on. It's just uh, the every, every change for Garrett is a comet. So this is a list of comets, actually. And you, got, you have a column for projects. You can hold many projects in Garrett. And this, and you can see maybe a last col column that is uh, yellow, green, and this forces you to make, like what I said, like forces you to make a small changes that they can be reviewed. And in Imbra, we chop them in a small task. So every change is a task that belongs to a user history. And it, it works pretty, pretty well for us. And this is what, mm, what Garrett understands for a changes. It has some kind of thing that is kind of a commit ID, but it's a change ID that doesn't change. Because the commit ID is going to change because you are going to beautify your commit, you're going to um, amend it, and you're going to make iterations. 
over a comic and upload them. And Gerrit is going to diff those iterations so you don't have to review all the commits again and again. It's, li it's like the idea we have in Drupal or for interdiffs. And also, you can have dependencies between commits. The concept in Drupal of or for this is that we postpone tasks. But we can postpone changes until some change is made. So maybe this helps, this helps with the block because you make a commit and you don't have to stop. You <coughs> make another commit, depend on that, and things like that, and so on and so on. Uh, this is how a Gary diff looks like. Uh, it's, it's pretty the same as other tools. Uh, you can even post comments on the commit message. So I don't like this commit message, please correct it, things like that. And this is what Garrett approval looks like. And uh, you can make plus one, plus two. Uh, for us at the beginning we thought, hey, plus one, plus one, plus two, but it's not like that. Someone has to come and say plus two, this is approved. And if you're not brave enough, uh, you can say just a lot of plus ones and don't, don't say plus two because you are not sure about the code, things like that. And you can even go mad and say minus two. I don't want this code. Please try to abandon, don't go this way or change it along. And in Garrett, uh, separates the machines from the humans. You have another kind of comments that are made by Jenkins or whatever tool you integrate with. And yeah, and mainly we use Garrett because it integrates very well with Garrett. There is another more prettier tools, but that's our choice. And this is uh, just Garrett is a website on a server, but you have uh, tools that can be used on your computer as a developer. Uh, we started using a thing that was called Git Garrett, uh, obviously, but it's kind of abandoned and we don't use it anymore. And, it's, and now we use Git Review. That is, it's written in Python and it's much more easy to use. And with this tool, you can submit a topic that might help grouping your changes, things like that. And Garrett is a command line tool that helps you to work offline. You can review, you can download all the changes, go on a plane, and review them offline. So, uh, Garrett drawbacks. I posted those uh, screenshots, so you see that the interface is ugly. It's, it's what that scares the most people. It's just black and white, you can put some colors in it, but it's uh, an interface that, that can, it can be made better, and Garrett developers are working on it, they know this flow. Um, it doesn't, doesn't allow for informal review, like everything has to happen there and allows no post commits, so everything has to happen before it gets into the repository. Has a bit of a learning cur curve because you have to amend the commits, push them and the dependencies things like that, if you want to keep working with it. And yeah, the concept of one change per commit is, is what Garrett is does. It, it does and it cannot be moved. And it I requires you to define a review process, but it helps you because it's very flexible in it. You can configure different kind of reviews, different roles, things like that. And yeah, what I said, no, no post commits. Uh, <coughs> I wanted to mention also a post commit review tool. Uh, it's, uh, it's a plugin. Uh, for Redmine, you can you set up your repo and you can open tickets saying, hey, please review this part. And the comment, I, it's, it's one thing that I don't like. The comments that you make, they're also a ticket on Garrett and on Redmine and you have to close every comment that ev someone makes on the on the code, so. Um, um, and yeah, you can mix, mix uh, the post-commit tools and the pre-commit tools, so you can make a great code review setup. Uh, I 
ended up at this, and yeah, uh, I didn't want to bore you with uh, many tools. I did an investigation on tools. There is Wikimedia, uh, it uses Garrett right now, but they are changing to Differential. That is the tool that, it's kind of a suite that you, they use in Facebook and they're in the process and the, uh, the conversations that they have about code review, they are public and they are great. They told me a lot, a lot about this, doing this talk. And um, I will be eager to change to differential and the fabricator suite when they, when they integrate with Jenkins. There is no, e and you have there a list in Wikipedia of other tools that are available for code review. Okay, some tips about getting conflicts out of the code review, doing ego-free code reviews. So first, no finger pointing, please, not you're doing it wrong, I know how to do it. Uh, try to phrase everything as a question, like, is this what we want to do? Do you think this is what uh, is going to meet the requirement? Uh, there is no point scoring, don't make a gamification of everyone reviewing everyone and trying to 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 be better than them because they know more code. Um, don't be pedantic, like I said, th let the tools be pedantic. Let the, let the tools say what is obviously wrong about the code, M maybe because it breaks. And this is controversial, but you, you have to, during code review, you have to focus on finding problems and not solutions. Because maybe you know the solution and you can post it on the comments, but if it's more than a line of code or uh, corrections on, on a, a small corrections, please point the people to, to discover themselves the solution. So yeah, in the comments, try to find the problems that exist with the code and let them find the solutions. And please embra embrace this feedback. This is what it's all about. Please review my code, I'm going to review your code, and you're going to get in a dynamic of everyone knowing about the, the tools, about the code, I mean. Uh, and I recommend you to look at uh, the comments that the Drupal core, com core committers do because they do it very good. I looked at them and they are very polite about them and they go away from the conflict and they focus on the code. And I want to encourage that it's, it's not that difficult. You can, it's very easy to introduce. Uh, the best teams that I know of, of the development, they are open, they are, they are collaborative, they talk between each other and feedback is what is the key of this. This is only code. I mean, we are not discussing big issues. It's what is our app is about. Helps a lot with the technical development of the, of the, of the team. And as I said, the project awareness is great. And now I want to hear about your code review. Uh, so, because my work is not going around companies and implementing code review tools for them. I'm just a developer in a team. And for me, it was great. It was a great process and I really believe in it. And I did some research on the tools uh, and I presented this talk, but uh, if you can find me later, I can talk about more tools. I, I found talking about more tools a bit boring, so I didn't introduce more in this talk. Uh, one thing that happened to us is that the use of, of pasting disappeared. We didn't post, well, we post less gist and things like that. We just posted a change to the to the review tool and there there was the code and <coughs> yeah and now i wanted to raise hand and tell me a, li a little bit about maybe there is a tool that i don't know of or some process that or some advice that you can talk about it and i really want to repeat these sessions in drupal camps because so you can make review on my talk <laughs> And that's it. So no one? Oh, okay. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks so much.
sales for the laptop. Any question? We have time. <laughs> I guess so. Oh, we have two minutes. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe one or two questions. What? Well? Yeah. Well, I don't. I can hear. Sorry. Uh, just a small uh, observation. Uh, do you know if uh, on GitLab uh, we could um, uh, limit the developers uh, only to merge uh, requests? For example, if we could limit them to merge requests and uh, uh, we fit uh, the pushing uh, into the ground. If uh, it's possible to limit it between, for example, young developers to uh, push it into the ground, but uh, not, not somebody else with the push. Yeah. I think the question is about uh, who can merge, no? Who can, uh, yeah, because you have developers. It's kind of, uh, could be risky. No. Yeah, you have developers that they can ma merge requests, but they cannot merge, no? Uh, we, yes, so they okay. can merge, so there is no way. I'm pretty sure that GitLab, GitLab does that. They have more, more roles, more role integration. So yeah, it's, it's kind of a very rapidly growing tool. They want to have more features than GitHub, so you can set up your own GitLab on your server, and you have more benefits, you know? Last one. Okay. Yeah. How do you organize yourself to manage the constant flow of commits every day? Do you have a daily review? We kind of review like three, three times a day. Well, when I, when I finish a task, for example, I go to the tool and review. I don't know if that was the question, like, how do we manage workflow? I think if, if you re review three or four times a day, it's enough. And, and at least you have a, a people who need a lot of feedback, like new developers. Okay, now uh, don't think too quick and don't go to it now. We have first our big uh, photo. Oh yeah. So you just uh, go down uh, the stairs, under the trees, with flowers, so we take the picture here. So come, everybody. And thank you very much, uh, Thank you. <laughs>